My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how to's, and reviews. And in today's video, we'll be taking a look at irrigation controller. This is a Rainbird's new ESP ME3 controller. We've got a Wi Fi, Link Wi Fi module as well. With this, we've also got a Rainbird flow sensor. So, this is new from Rainbird. Uh, in the past, I've done other flow sensor videos. Um, so, this will be a quick overview video more of an unboxing video, show you what's inside, and kind of some basic features, maybe talk a little bit about what a flow sensor is and what the benefit of it is. And then here coming up this summer, we'll find a project to install this on and show you uh, how to install and do all that. I do already have videos of uh, Rainbird's controllers, the TM2 controller, set up and install. I've got a setup video for the Link Wi-Fi module. Um, so you can check out those videos, the programming videos, the how to use the Rainbird app. All of these will work with that same Rainbird app that I've already got set up. So check out those videos if you're interested. And right now we'll get started with our unboxing. Okay, let's work our way up here from smallest to largest. Up front here we've got the Link Wi-Fi module. Uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, this is just this little uh, piece that you plug into your controller and it enables it to be Wi-Fi ready. Um, that's about all there is to it. So if you're interested in that, curious about how that works, check out the other uh, Link Wi-Fi module video and that'll show you more about that. Okay, moving right along. This is what I'm most excited to see. I, I am kind of curious about their new controller, but the fact that they've got a flow sensor is awesome. Um, personally, I feel like any smart controller really ought to come with a flow sensor. It's really kind of the what makes it functional, what makes it work, and what gives it the information that it needs. Well, that's pretty beefy. That is a sturdy little box. They don't want this thing getting damaged. Okay, here you go. We've got Rainbird on there. Zero gallons used. So this is like what your city meter is. A very similar setup. Uh, and what it does is it Let's see if we can pull off one of these tabs. Your water flows in, and there's a little impeller inside there, and then that will spin, and the water will go out the other side, and as that spins, it'll count how many gallons of water is used. So this is a flow sensor, so it counts uh, gallons used uh, and gallons per minute, um, so it can, it can know how to compare it. This really looks like a pretty industrial unit. It looks very similar to what I've seen from a, a lot of city uh, meters and then obviously we've got a two wire system here and this two wire has to be fed back to your controller Nice Rainbird logo on top there as well a little notch in the cap on either side so this can close Keep the dirt and crap out um, These boxes are known to fill up with sediment So it's nice to cover that up and then it's nice and clean when you lift the lid you can see how many gallons you got We've got some different fittings In order to connect it to your pipe so the, the mating surface here those two mate together, and so there's a washer in between that is what's going to hold your water pressure. This sleeve just sleeves over top of here. Okay, just like that. We've got a number on here, identification number. Okay, let's start on number one. So this flow sensor is intended to be used with the ESP ME3 controller. This guy right here. Here's our installation materials. Gather those. Number two, repair the irrigation line and work area. Shut off the main water supply, depressurizing it. Locate a section of irrigation pipe upstream desired sensor location. Mark the necessary length of pipe to be removed, cut and remove. So this is for a retrofit installation. So if you are retrofitting, not a new install. So a lot of times with a, a flow sensor, they'll require a certain amount of feet to be undisturbed in front of it. They don't want to have a 90 or anything like that right in front of it because that will disturb the flow. Okay, right here, right here it's showing you the dimensions. So I'm not sure what this minimum eight pipe diameter, because right here it's saying flow sensor size is a one inch flow sensor, length of pipe removed to accommodate sensor, sensor and coupling lay length is 15 and a half, required paint pipe length removable 15 and 6 eighths, and it says minimum straight length of pipe downstream of master valve is 31 and a half inches. So regardless of what you do, make sure you've got plenty of straight section for this to go. You don't want to be putting this in a, a tight space. So this is actually showing to do um, a male adapter, which would be a female thread. Definitely don't use a standard Schedule 40 PVC. I would use Schedule 80, uh, the gray stuff. So it's going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger, and prevent that from 
from splitting where that threads on and do not over tighten that you want to use teflon and don't over tighten that right here it says you yep use teflon hand tighten pvc fittings use a pipe wrench to tighten an additional half to full turn install flow sensor onto pipe and secure lock rings flow sensor mu valve must be installed in a horizontal plane so we can't put this sideways either way it needs to be a horizontal with the ground close the sensor lid uh, the communications wire. So here's the other important thing with flow sensors is your wire. For cable lengths greater than 500 feet, areas with excessive lightning or installations close proximity to buildings use shielded cable to ensure strong communication. So shielded, commun shielded wire is commonly not only a recommendation but a requirement. Okay, so, it's, so it's, it's just direct berry wire with an outer sheath and then it's got an inner insulation to cover the actual wire. Careful not to cut your wire. So it's saying for long lengths or lightning areas, use shielded wire. Uh, you also should use shielded wire if you're running it near uh, like an underground power line or things like that that might affect communication. Some people will tell you not to run this with your um, controller wire for your sprinkler system. If you've got a multi-strand wire for your sprinkler valves, some people will say you have to run it in a different trench. Um, there's a bunch of different recommendations. So then after we do all that, we all obviously connect we connect wire here to these pigtails, we run it to our controller, and then we connect it to our controller. Not to be used with unfiltered water, source containing potential debris, lakes, ponds, wells, and other unfiltered sources. Like I said, this is exciting for me, maybe not so much for everyone else. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute, a little bit more in depth. Um, but here's probably what most people are interested in, is the ESP ME3 controller. This is their new controller. A little bit um, uh, militarized. It's kind of got a, a different shape to it. A little bit more of an army aggressive. Just kind of a strong, strong faceplate on it. So this is a four station controller. Um, on the box here it says flow sensor ready, link Wi-Fi module ready, and backlit display. Indoor and outdoor use. Um, this is a water sense label. And it has a three-year warranty. It says trade three-year warranty, so I'm assuming that's for contractors. And it can run, it has four stations, it can go up to 22. I'm not sure why they're doing this still. This They add the extra modules. I, I don't know if that's a, a sales ploy or what, but you, you basically buy more of these guys. This thing just slides in here and you lock it in a place and you can buy, this is the, the first place one, one through four. So these next ones are a little bit smaller in size and they've got six valves each. I'm not sure why companies are still going this route. I, I don't know if it's a cost savings or if it's a way to make extra money on the back end, but they, you know, it comes with four and you have to pay to upgrade the rest. Your sensor plugs in up here, your power goes in here. I'm glad to see this comes with a pigtail. Sometimes you have to order them with pigtails, um, so make sure you've got that. If it doesn't have a pigtail, you have to either add a pigtail or you can hardwire these. You, uh, you know, have an electrician plumb into this box. Um, usually you run your run your wire up to the bottom and you can connect it. So we'll kind of look at the internals here. Um, here's where your link Wi-Fi module goes is right in here. Actually, let's go. Accessory. I'm not sure what this is for. You can put a 9 volt battery right here and, and it holds the your memory. So we got a flow sensor here. We've got a, you can put a rain sensor on here as well. One thing I really like to do is if you're putting in a flow sensor, you, you ought to put in a master valve. So he, here you've got the MV, which is this middle one on the top, master valve. What that does is every time the controller turns on, it sends power to the master valve and it keeps the master valve on while it waters all of your zones, one through whatever, one through four, one through 12, one through 22, however many zones you've got. The master valve turns on the whole time it's watering and then it turns off. What that does is it keeps your main line turned off when your system's not running. So if you have a, a, ma a main line break, that break's only gonna be leaking for the time that your system's running. So if your system's running three days a week and it runs for four or six hours, well, it's only gonna be leaking for that four or six hours, whereas normally it'd be leaking 24 seven. And again, this is where we get into why you would want a flow sensor. A flow sensor, what it does, when you set this up, it will sense, when you, when you install your flow sensor, you turn it to flow sensor, and it will run through all the zones, and it will calculate how much flow each zone uses, how many gallons per minute zone one uses, zone two uses, and then it will actually 
every time it waters, it'll look back at those times. And if you've got a nozzle that's popped off, a, you know, the lawn mowing guy whacked off a nozzle, or you've got a brake, you had some guy drive a stake through your line and it punctured it, whether it's a main line or a lateral line, the, the controller will know if you have a spike in pressure, a reduction in pressure, or a high pressure. Uh, and if it's a, over 130%, let's say you normally you use uh, 10 gallons a minute on zone one, and if it's above 13 gallons per minute, it's gonna send an alert to the controller. And if it's below seven gallons per minute, it'll send an alert to the controller. Uh, I'm not sure on this controller if you can change that. That's what it comes with uh, programs uh, from the Rainbird is that 130% or 70%. And that's just a great way of diagnosing your system, of knowing if you have leaks without having to have somebody on site or walking outside and seeing a wet spot or seeing water running off or, or worst case scenario, having it flood your basement. So really cool stuff in, in the irrigation industry. You know, automatic controller's been around for a long time, but the master valves, the flow sensors are kind of new technology. I guess while we're talking about the master valve, another function that this can be used for is if you have a well pump and you need to turn on that well pump uh, before you turn on the irrigation system, that's a good way to do it as well. You use the master valve and it will send power to the well pump and turn the well pump on prior to you watering. Whether that's uh, a well in the ground or if you're pulling water from a ditch or a pond or a river, Whatever it is, whatever type of system you've got that gives you that flexibility. Um, kind of a unique situation. Not a lot of people have to deal with that. Um, but when you need it, you need it. And, and most controllers do adapt for that. So uh, let's plug this in real quick. See what it looks like powered up. And um, we'll have to probably close the video at that. Uh, and we'll get more in depth in a future video on how this controller works. And, you know, program the whole thing, set it up. And, you know hook it up to a flow sensor and you know show you the whole shebang okay we turn it on it thinks it's 5 31 a.m. we'll go to auto thinks it's Wednesday press to hold and start date and time you know Rainbird's been refining these a long time now they really are well refined first watering time on program a is 8 o'clock a.m. We've got a run times of 10 minutes on zone one. Watering days all, every day a week. Rain sensor is on. So you can turn that off. So we don't have a sensor on here. Seasonal adjust. Some people like to adjust their programs with seasonal adjust. Um, just turn it up or down the actual water amount. Here's our flow sensor. Sensor is off right now and we could do manual watering is two minutes per zone. So there's a quick look at their new display. Um, you know, everyone's gotta have the, the, the fanciest and greatest display. Uh, you know, overall, the way this is laid up, this is very similar to um, what their controllers have been over time. Like I said, the uh, outside's a little bit different, a little bit more uh, rough and rugged looking, if you ask me, um, but, at the end of the day, it's very similar to how they used to be. They always have this ribbon here, and you've, you've got the faceplate you can pop off. Uh, very similar, um, but I think the internals here, they've really kind of refined over the years and made them more and more user-friendly as time goes on. Over here on this side, we do have this packet that comes with it, and I like that they do this. They, they give you this little thing to just hang right here. And that just, it looks nice. It, it fits in the box well, and it's, it's a really great, easy to use, easy to read thing for homeowners um, that don't know, don't know what they're doing. As, contractor, as a contractor, you know, this stuff's easy for me. I don't even have to look at this. I just program it and I go to the next one. Every controller's a little bit different. Um, but for a homeowner, this is great to have. And here's our installation guide. This is for, you know, the hard wiring, mounting it to the wall, and the initial programming. There you go. It does come with a key if you want to lock your box. And with the, with the key to the box, we also have um, some screws, some drywall screws to mount it with. Thanks for watching this Thrifty Garage video on the Rainbird ESP ME3, the Link Wi-Fi module, and the flow sensor. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope it was informative, and if you if you did like it, give us a thumbs up, 
we'd appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, as well as hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching Thrifty Garage. The hair's getting floppy. Gotta do something about that.